Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of my own background because this is relevant to why I was invited to participate in this project, uh, and it and it will speak to what I see are some of the important things that this project is is seeking to to accomplish, and perhaps perhaps uh, some ways that it can be that those goals can be accomplished, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the issue that's come up a couple of times, which is the potential for this for a project like this to expand and to, to be more than just a partnership between two schools, but to be part of a broader network uh, of uh, linking uh, institutions, historians, uh, and other practitioners across a, a broader region. And if that part sounds a little bit like I'm trying to sell, uh, you know, a potential partner? Well, oh well, it does, it'll sound like that. Uh, and then finally, I want to conclude uh, in, in, in some ways, following up on what Agnes has talked about here, with uh, uh, some comments about what some of the potential, I don't want to say challenges, because I don't think they're challenges, but I think they're issues that need to be thought through uh, that I know the team has spent a lot of time thinking about and working on, but there's some of the things that, that, that strike me about, uh, about what's going on in this project. The, so I promise I, I promised I won't spend too much time on my background, but I am a specialist in East African history focusing on Tanzania. I've been going to Tanzania for 36 years. Uh, I've taught at the University of Dar es Salaam. I've served as an external examiner there, which is once a year they bring somebody from outside in and they make them read all the history exams. So I did that for three years. And I have run a study abroad program in Tanzania from Texas Southern uh, for the last 15 years. Uh, and. Uh, I should say for I should say Texas Southern is a historically black university in Houston, which means of course that we're while we're an urban university like Cleveland State, we are as Mark talked about chronically underfunded. So being able to uh, with a student body that is 80% uh, reliant on federal financial aid. Uh, so being able to create a system where we can take students from Texas Southern, many of whom have never left Texas before. To East Africa is, is something I'm very proud of, and I got lots of tricks about how you can do things like that. So, um, my own research has in part been on the production of historical knowledge. Uh, one of the books that I wrote uh, in collaboration with a local historian in Dodoma, Tanzania, was called Practicing History in Central Tanzania, Writing Memory and Performance. And it was very much about the way uh, in which this, uh, he was a retired school teacher and school administrator, in his retirement sought to preserve what he saw as the history of his people which he felt was not being preserved either in local terms, but at the same time also in a, in a way that would reach, that would put his local community in a conversation, in a context, on a map, you know, that would make it visible, uh, would give it a voice. Yeah. Um, and so that book is all is very much a, a dialogue between he and I about this, what he's trying to do, this process, uh, and how, you, you know, how he how he is set about doing it. And that that leads me to sort of a, a partial answer to one of Agnes's questions. There, you know, who is this for? I'm actually fairly optimistic uh, in this sense. There's a great deal of overall interest in, you know, people understanding their own history, in a sense, uh, in, and in wanting to see that history, again, put in, you know, put on the map, put in a place, in dialogue. So, uh, yeah, I was back in Dodoma this last year for the first time in several years, and I walked down the street, and about three or four people stopped me and said, hey, you got a copy of your book? You talk about my father on page so-and-so. You know, and I was shocked. I was like, read the book. But, um, so people are very interested in this. And so I, projects like this one, you know, I think have, the, you know, justify themselves. The, it will be used. It, will, it is of interest. And it will, be, it will create, you know, uh, traffic and conversation. You know, some of it critical. But you know what? That's a good thing, too, you know? Um, 
Now, so if you can, I hope you can tell that I really am impressed with uh, the work that has been done by Mark, by uh, Professor Magaga, and the team at Maseno by Meshach. This is this is to me a very important project, one that that deserves both. Uh, wide acclaim and is a model for things that can be done, you know, across, you know, in all sorts of different contexts, not just in Africa. And I am very grateful for Mark and Meshek for inviting me down, or inviting me up to talk about it some. So I, I really have, have learned a lot. Now, the second thing I wanted to do here, and this is the, this is the part that's a plug, how would you go about expanding this, in particular in Tanzania? where I have a great deal of experience. And I can tell you that just as uh, the partnership between Maseno and Cleveland State, you know, is built on a commonality of interest, there are institutions in Tanzania that have you know, already begun to look at things like this. Um, the University of Dar es Salaam's graduate program in history requires each of their students to take an oral methodology class and in that class each student is given basically a neighborhood in Dar es Salaam or an institution in Dar es Salaam in the capital city uh, and told to do a, you know, both oral history and, and a literature and, and archive search. You know, to, so they write like a, a seminar paper, 20 to 50 pages. That's basically just a little mini history of this. These things go back for like 20 years. They are a wonderful archive of stories of about institutions, about incidents, about the communities that you know grow and fall in a changing, rapidly growing urban area. And it's one of my hopes that one day I'll get to sit down with my colleagues at Dar es Salaam and we'll make this more available in some way or another. But this is the type of work that goes on every day at institutions in East Africa. This is how students are trained to be historians or trained in historical methods. Uh, and that, that sort of information is already available and has, and there is the capability to institutionally organize uh, the type of work that has to go on, that's been going on in uh, Kisumu uh, with this project. Likewise, I visited the University of Dodoma uh, this year for the first time. Dodoma, uh, the University of Dodoma is a new university. It's only about five or six years old as a state university. It is the largest university in Tanzania now it, by design. It was built to be uh, the sort of comprehensive university as opposed to Dar es Salaam and some of the other universities are more specialized. And, um, and one of the, their history department, of Department of History, Archaeology, and Heritage Management which is a, a component of the history degrees in several universities in, in Tanzania, uh, has already been charged with uh, trying to build up, first in the Dodoma region itself, a sort of an archive, a collection of artifacts and of explanation for uh, local culture. And so they, when I visited the University of Dodoma, they were very, because I'd written about the region as well, they were very proud to show me this, this massive collection of artifacts that they'd pulled in, how they'd had students not just collecting artifacts, but uh, collecting contacts for the artifacts, collecting stories about the artifacts, collecting stories, you know, about local history, you know, and they were trying, and, and the idea was that over the course of several years, uh, you know, different cohorts of students would come through and they would build up something that would become, in essence, an ethnographic museum, you know? Uh, and again, so this is, this is the type of the engaged, the, and I'll be honest with you, the University of Dodoma being a new institution, having very young academic staff, uh, this is, a, you know, be, being engaged with a project like this is something that would really benefit, you know, that institution uh, and the students who, uh, who would go there. Um, you know, I, I've heard, we heard earlier today uh, from Eric, from several other people about the technical difficulties, technical in the sense of the actual technology, but technical in the sense of how do you run a project and, you know, across long distances and how do you manage communications, you know. 
I, I don't want to say those aren't real issues because they are. I don't, you know, I've had my share of dealing with them. I deal with them every year when I take students. We have all sorts of issues like that. I know that the, the technical issues uh, are things that you really can't, in some cases, can't anticipate until you actually get there, you know? Um, but you know what? I'm, I'm an optimist about these things. They'll get solved, you know? The approach that's being taken, uh, one that uh, on the technical side focuses on mobile accessibility, on uh, you know sort of like app-based as opposed to web-based you know design, I think is the right one. I think that there nothing that uh, smartphone use will do nothing but expand in East Africa. Uh, I mean you can just see it. I mean if you. Go over the course. If I've been going over the course of years, that use has expanded dramatically already, and it will do nothing but expand more. And uh, the the issues that are involved will be things that you that can be solved and will be solved over time. Um, so I, you know, for all and you know, management issues. Management issues are always there, right? You always get someplace. You always get someplace. You've got a project you're trying to do. You forget to think about or that you've got to pay a lot to move people around. You know, or that all of a sudden you can't go one place because something's happened there. You can't do what you wanted to do there, so you have to figure out how to change it and do it someplace else. That happens. You know, and and the only way that you actually you can't prevent them. You just have to be able to be flexible. And deal with them, you know, and and hopefully, you know, have prepared enough flexibility in what you're doing to do it. Um, so I, you know, on the whole, I really am actually quite impressed with the way in which their description of how the project has been working uh, seems to indicate that it's that they are dealing with those issues. Now. Finally, I did want to talk about some issues that I do think that are worth talking about. And some of this plays off of what Agnes has already talked about. Uh, the idea of voice, whose voice is being heard. Uh, I would add to it, who, who controls what's being put up. And, and I don't mean that just in, in, a, in, just in terms of, you know, it's a collaboration. I mean, in some senses, for this, these, types of pro these types of collaborative endeavors to really succeed, there's got to be control, I would argue, on the African side and the Tanzanian side. That's where, because this is about, you know, in this case, it's about the history of one region, one place, you know, in Kenya. Well, guess what? Guess who needs to control that? the people of that place, you know. That's where the control needs to lie. And that's where, you know, the questions of voice need to be debated, of whose voice is going to be heard and, and uh, how you're going to, to have multiple voices. To that end, as I was sitting here listening to the description of the project, I was th a, something really e important struck me. First of all, this project covers one of the most historiographically interesting places in Africa. And this is the place uh, about which uh, uh, David Cohen and Meshach's old professor Atien Odiambo wrote Siaya, which is one of the most innovative and in some ways controversial uh, studies of a, the history of a place in African history. It is, uh, you know, it was is often called postmodern, you know, but it is very much grounded in a landscape, in the landscape of Nyanza, of Siaya in particular, um, and this project covers the same landscape, you know. Uh, it would be interesting. It's an, it, you know, as a historiographic exercise, it would be very interesting to sort of counterpose those two issues, because this project, in defining its subject as a place, is doing something that, you know, I bet a lot of people in Yanza wouldn't actually think of history that way, you know. And I, they, yeah, this is not a criticism because I, I, you know, I actually think that defining a place as, as a, a subject for history is very important. Points out th things such as interaction, change over time, 
you know, that, that other ways of defining your historical subject don't actually get at nearly as well. I would venture to guess that most people in Inyanza, when they think of history, they think of it in ethnic terms. You know, in terms of a history, the dominant ethnic group is Luo, the other ethnic groups, of course, Kenya is multi-ethnic society. And that's often the way that people will think of a history of the Luo. So for example, to go back to my, to my uh, case from Dodoma, when the students at the University of Dodoma are told to go out and begin this archive, you know, they are told to do it first for the Gogo people. The people of Dodoma, the people who are the largest ethnic group in Dodoma region. You know, it's not an archive of Dodoma; it's an archive of the Gogo people, and that's the you know that's the sort of the way they think of it. Um, now, I am not saying that it is wrong to do a place. In fact, I would actually I would actually say that it's probably critically important in uh, in Western Kenya to talk about the history of Kisumu, Nyanza. Whatever, whatever range you want to take, as a history of a place, as a history of interaction of people from all, from different backgrounds, you know, uh, as a way of, in some ways, quite consciously countering narratives that tend to sometimes prioritize ethnic belonging at the expense of, you know, interaction, you know. So I'm not, I'm not against that, but it's important to note that that's a choice, you know, and that's a choice that's been made by the project. You know, to, to do it that way. Um, and I think that if, if going forward, going forward, if you think of this as a, you know, if you think of this as something that can expand, it's important to be able to think about how that choice, and I know the actual conception of the whole project is about place, how that choice is going to play out in other historical contexts, you know? Now, finally, I want to conclude. That these, these are things that really probably I should just say to the organizers, but I'm just going to say them in public anyway. Um, it, you know, the, the, the choice of language is also important. Now, I, in Kenya, English is perfectly fine because English is the medium of almost all education, and almost everybody who's educated speaks English, you know. Um, in Tanzania, if you were doing it in Tanzania, you would greatly limit its scope if you did it only in English. It would not be a public project in English. It would be just a university project. A public project in Tanzania would have to be in Kiswahili, because that is a language of day-to-day -day life. And a great many people in Tanzania don't speak, in, don't speak English. They speak only Kiswahili. And that's just an aside. And it's something that, if you, again, if you're thinking about a regional expansion, you'll face this issue wherever you, you know. If you were to try and include Mozambique, you know, you'd have to think about, port you'd have to think about translation. So th this is, again, gets us back to, to audience and what the audience is and the importance of being relevant in uh, to the audience. The second thing I'd like to uh, I'd like to point out. This is something that they, that I haven't heard any mention of, but it's something that that, that might have to um, they might have to think about a little bit, and that draws on the issue of political uh, impact and political control. Tanzania just passed the cybersecurity bill that has the potential to limit what is posted up online in Tanzania. Now, I mean, the government promises that's not what they're going to do with it. You know, it's only about true cyber security, but, and I, you know, this, you have to be aware, I, I'm not sure what the situation is in Kenya in these terms, uh, but you have to be aware of these types of legal environments, not just the, the overt political environments. So with that, I will finish and say once again, uh, I very much appreciate being invited. And I very much, I, I, this is teasing only, I'm very much hoping that I'll get invited back to Kisumu and Maseno uh, where I have visits. Thank you.